place for sure. Very deep place, staying within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifting me, now say, am I? Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to Him I give, ever to Him I cling. In His blessed presence live, ever His praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, so besong, faithful loving service to, to Him belong. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me. Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saved. He will lift you by His love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved to him. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else. Love lifted me. Brother Pete Muker, if you would, lead us in prayer. Brother Pete, if you would, lead us in prayer. Amen. You may be seated. I was thinking as we were singing that uh, that second line, sinking to rise no more, but the master of the sea. Amen. He showed up. Amen. Right. The master of the sea. You heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Number 184. Number 184. He abides, he abides with me. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the pilgrim way for the hand of God in all life I see and the reason of my bless yes the secret all is this the comforter abides with me he abides he abides hallelujah he abides with me I'm 
rejoicing night and day as I walk narrow way for the comforter binds with me on the second and the last once my heart was full of sin and no peace within till I heard of Jesus thy tree then I fell down at his feet and there came a peace so sweet to abides with me he abides him hallelujah he abides with me I'm rejoicing night and day as walk the narrow way for the comforter abides with me there's no thirsting for the things of They've taken wings long ago and gave them up and instantly All my night was turned to day on Throwed away now the comforter is with me He am by He am by Hallelujah He abides with me I'm rejoicing night and day Walk the narrow way for the comforter binds with me. Number 143. Number 143. My Jesus, I love thee. 143. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine for thee all the folly sin I resign my gracious redeemer my savior art thou if Jesus, tis now on the second and the last. I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now in mansions of glory and he I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright. I'll sing with a glittering crown on my brow. If Just is now number 248. Number 248. I have a home prepared with saints by just over in the glory land, and I long to be my, my Savior's side. Over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land, just over in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land. 
I am on my way to those mansions fair just the glory land there to sing God's praise and his glory share just over in the land just on I'll join the happy angel band just over in the land just the glory land there with the mighty host I'll stand just over in the land let's together as we sing that on the sing the last verse let's stand together all right after we finish the uh, Chorus, turn around and fellowship together, all right? With the blood was thrown, I shout and sing, just over in the glory land. Glad hosannas to Christ the Lord and King, over in the glory land. Just in the glory land, I'll join the happy angel band. Just over in the glory land, just glory land, thou dread the mighty host, I'll stand just over in glory land. Turn around and fellowship together, she followed. Hey, Chuck. Chuck, you got somebody to sing a special? You got somebody to sing a special? Stevie, my. Yeah, I asked her earlier. You know how that goes. I asked her. Okay. She'd probably do it for you, but not for me. You may be seated. We'll make a one or two announcements. We'll receive our offering. On oh, next week, next Sunday night, we'll have another missionary with us, Juan Delafonte. He'll be here on next Sunday night. And then don't forget our revival it starts on the 17th and goes through the 20th. Brother Keith Allison will be our evangelist. You pray for the revival in the days ahead, all right? Okay. Good to have Brother Dwayne back tonight. How about praying God's blessing on the offer?
did good. Don't forget, Saturday, October the 28th, is our uh, directory taking pictures and the sign-up sheet in the back on the left as you go out the door, all right? We'll need 50 families at least, minimum, to sign up for it, all right? Okay, Stevie, you going to come to sing for us before your husband comes to preach, all right? Mm-hmm. I'm proud of him. Sir. I never forgot that. And I gave you what is good to see young men like that. Amen. Chuck asked me this afternoon, he goes, can you please sing a song for me? And I said, sure. And I never know what he's going to ask me to sing, but um, this is one of my favorite songs. I grew up singing this song, and um, it was my grandmother's, one of her favorites, and we did it at her funeral. Or, Well, I didn't do it. My cousin did it for him, but um, it's a blessing, and I love this song. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ear the And he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. He speaks, and the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing, and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. With me and he talks with me and
and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me is falling but the voice I hear calling on my ear the with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever That's pretty hard to follow right there. Uh, I was handed a message to share with y'all. Sister Bonnie Cooper uh, died today. This is Brother Joe Cooper's uh, wife who used to pastor Edgewood years ago. So if y'all would, uh, please be praying for the family of uh, Sister Bonnie Cooper. You would take your Bibles. We're going to go several places tonight, but we'll start off with Ezekiel 34 26. Ezekiel 34 26. Ezekiel 34 26. <clears throat> It says, and I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing, and I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing. Gracious Heavenly Father, God, we're so very thankful for your precious holy word, Lord, how it directs us and helps us through life. It's, it is our life. It's our lifeline. And God, we uh, pray tonight, God, that you would use us for your glory and honor. I pray that your word would change hearts. I pray none of us would uh, leave tonight the same as we came in, but Lord, that we would be drawn closer to you through your word, Lord. Uh, may you be glorified in everything that's done and said. In Jesus' sweet holy name we pray, amen. I want to talk to you tonight about the place or position of receiving blessing. The place or position of receiving blessing. A blessing is defined as God's favor and protection a beneficial thing for which one is grateful, something that brings well-being. Do y'all like to receive blessings? I don't know about y'all, but I need every one I can get. And I don't want to ever do anything to interrupt the flow because I am so dependent on my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, I want us tonight, we're going to look at three people in three situations, their attitudes, and the blessings that they received. This will be a little bit different, and I'll be honest with you, I tried to get out of it, but the Lord wouldn't leave me alone. And so I'm just going to preach it, and uh, so y'all pray for me, okay? So the first person that we're going to look at is found in Mark 5.25. Mark 5.25. Mark 5.25. And the person that we're going to speak about here is the woman with the issue of blood. Mark 5.25. 
It says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her daughter, Thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Her situation was she had a serious health issue. She had a need. She was in need of healing. I remember years ago, uh, and I've told you this before, me and my wife got to go to Ephesus. And one of the places there at Ephesus was a place called the Asclepion. It was a uh, medieval place of healing, you might say. And if you read about it, it'll tell you that they would uh, interview the people before they came because they didn't want nobody coming that they couldn't heal. See, they had a reputation for being able to heal people. So if you was really sick, they'd mess that up. So the only people that they would allow to come was the people that maybe had a psychological problem. And so they would uh, you know, do mud baths and uh, herbs and you know, bubbling brook sounds with water and whisper, and, and then they would do a diagnosis by interpreting their dreams. It was a place of quacks, false doctors. Now, I don't know that this lady went to the Asclepion, but it does kind of set the scene for some of the people that existed back then. We still got some of them today. Uh, you know, the first thing we ought to do if we're sick or in need of health, uh, got a health problem, is we ought to ask the Lord to help us. And I'm so guilty. I, I tell you, sometimes I get sick, and the first thing I do is I make me an appointment before I even ask God to help me. It ought not be that way. Now, I'm not saying you don't need to make an appointment, but you ought to tell the Lord, say, Lord, I really need your help. I need you to, to heal me. And so we see this woman, and uh, she. I want us to look at, at her attitude, Okay. Her first one, I believe, was anticipation. She's got some hope. In 527 it says, When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind. She's anticipating that Jesus is going to be able to do something for her. She's got some hope that Jesus can help her in her situation. She's no doubt heard about the miracles that Jesus has performed. And so she is coming with an anticipation that Jesus is going to help her. But she also comes with an expectation. She comes with faith. In Mark 5, 27 and 28, it says, When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and she took action. She touched His garment. For she said, If I may touch but His clothes, I, I might be whole. No, it says, I shall be whole. Amen. You remember what Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We have hope, and then we have faith. And faith, I told you this here a while back, faith is what holds up hope. It's like the foundation for hope. And when there's no faith, hope will crumble. We have hope. We have faith. We take action. And there's evidence. There's fact. There's things that start to change in our life. And so she has anticipation. She has expectation. But then she comes to a realization. <laughs> she comes to a realization. In Mark 5, 29 it says, And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. Do you see the progress here? She anticipates, she expects, 
And then she comes to the realization, Jesus, not maybe, might, he can and he will and he does heal me. That's the kind of faith that we're supposed to have. So this woman receives a blessing from God in, in, in an improvement in her health. That word virtue there in verse 30, for those of you that haven't looked it up, it's, it, it's interpreted dunamis, which is where we get that word dynamite. It's not just power. I mean, it's, it's great power that Jesus possesses and He wants to bestow that on us. He wants to shower us with His blessings. But you know, we've got to have the right attitude. We have to walk in faith. Just as this woman has come to Him in faith also. I remember when me and Stevie went to Lee's Chapel, I remember Brother Richard Ellis sharing this story with me. And he dealt with anxiety. Terrible anxiety. And he, he went to the doctor and he got him some pills. And he was coming home he stopped at a bridge and he threw them in the creek. And he said, God, you're bigger than this. Now, I'm not suggesting you go and throw away all your pills. But we do need to realize that God does have great power. Amen. And he wants to shower that on us. He wants us to receive that. But we need to ask. We need to believe. We need to have faith that Jesus can help us with our problems. Now, sometimes the very way that Jesus might help us is to direct us to the right physician or the right medication. So don't misunderstand what I'm saying tonight. I don't want y'all to come back and say, you know, I nearly died because I threw away all my blood pressure medication. Don't come back and do that. But we need to put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. And we need to be in a place and a position to receive that blessing. This woman was in a place to receive blessing from God. She trusted in Jesus. The second person I'd like for us to look at, we find in 1 Kings 17, 7. 1 Kings 17, 7. And this is the widow woman of Zarephath. The widow woman of Zarephath in 1 Kings 17, 7. It says, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, that's Elijah, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I'm gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. That's amazing, isn't it? This isn't a fairy tale, by the way. This is a true story. You need to let that sink in. She's fixing to fix their last meal and die. This is poverty. Poverty. And it says, Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, Neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. Her situation was she's living in poverty. She has no provision. She's broke. She's destitute. She has no money. But she does have a hope. She has anticipation. If you'll look in verse 15, it says, and she went. She went. She is anticipating something is going to happen. And then it says, and she 
did. She has an expectation. She did according as the man of God said. And then we see the realization in 1 Kings 17, 15, it says, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Many days. She anticipated, she expected, and then she came to the realization. She received a blessing from God. She was destitute, but then all of a sudden, she has all of her needs met. A great blessing comes from God. Now I want to ask you, do you have a need concerning your finances? Do you need a blessing from God concerning your finances? Probably every one of us go, Ooh, yeah, hey, help me Lord. Are you being faithful with what you've got? Are you being a faithful steward of those things that God has already given you? Now, This lady right here, I believe, is to the extreme, but this is all she's got left. And Elijah says, you take care of me first. You take care of me first. You know, we're supposed to give of our finances the first is supposed to go to God. I remember in our journey in finances as a husband and wife, uh, used to, I would put Ten dollars in the plate. And then as I kept going to church and going to Sunday school and learning more about the Word of God, I found out there's this thing called a tithe. It's not ten dollars, it's ten percent of my income. So we decided, all right, we we'll tithe off of the the net. It's a journey, right? We're learning, we're learning, we're we're getting there. And then I keep learning and listening to the man of God and his word. And I realized, you know, it's really supposed to be off my, my gross. And God gets the first of that. And then as I continue, as we continue in our journey, we come to the realization that really the tithe is just a beginning point. You really ought to move beyond that. Um, this lady, I think, Uh, has moved way beyond that. You know, I've been asking myself a question lately. Should you give so much of your finances to the Lord that you put yourself in poverty? Should, Should you give so much of your finances that you put yourself in poverty? This lady, she's already in poverty, but she's going to give the man of God what she's got first. But what we need to understand is when we go on these journeys, you're taking your family with you. And that can be kind of hard. Because if you'll remember, this widow woman has a son. She says, I'm going to cook our last meal and we're going to die. But he says, the man of God says, you bring me a cake, you bring me that cake first. Something I want you to notice in verse 9. It says, Arise, get thee to Seraphath, which belongeth to Zion, and dwell there. Before, Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So before he got there, she'd already received a word from God that she was to do this, to take care of this man. She must have already had a relationship with God for him to communicate with her. And so she's willing to give of her finances. So the answer to the question is found in Luke 6, 38. And you can trust my reading or you can look it up yourself, but Luke 6, 38. The answer to the question. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, withal it shall be measured to you again. So what happens is what 
to you, can happen to you, as God blesses you because you are faithful steward with your finances, is exactly what happens to this woman. She gives God all she can. And what does he do? She's no longer in poverty. Right? Is that not what the Scripture says? She went and did according uh, in 1 Kings 17, 15, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. I've got a good friend, his name is Barry Dollar, and we were talking about finances many years ago. And I never will forget this, Barry, just like Brother Tate was talking about that couple this morning that forsook all to follow after the Lord. My friend Barry did the same. And he says, I don't tithe off my income, I tithe off of what I need for income. I said, what? He says, I tithe off of what I need for income. I don't have it, but I'm tithing off in faith that God will, will give that to me. This whole life that we live with Christ is about faith. Faith in every aspect of our life. If you want blessings to help you in your health, it's going to come from the Lord Jesus Christ. If you want blessings in your finances, it's going to come by the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have to live according to His precepts and His, uh, His law and His Word. It directs us each day. So now we're going to go to our third person in Luke 19. Luke 19. Luke 19.1. The person is Zacchaeus. Luke 19.1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. He was a tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was, of little, of, was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. Well, this man's situation was, he was short. But he wasn't just short in stature. He was short on love. He was short on joy. He was short on long-suffering. All the, all, all, all the fruits of the Spirit, he was short on it. He came up short. This man was lost and he needed Jesus. But let's look at his attitude. He has an anticipation. He has a hope. In Luke 19.3, it says, and he sought to see Jesus. He sought to see Jesus. Now, I don't think he's really expecting salvation that day. He just wants to get a glimpse of Jesus. But he's compelled to seek Jesus. And then he has an expectation. He's got some faith. In Luke 19, 4, it says he's going to do something about being short. He's going to run, and he climbed up a tree. Luke 19, 4, it says, and he ran before and climbed up in a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must abide at thy house. He made haste, he came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, 
And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him four, four, fourfold. And now he has a realization in Luke 19, 9. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation. Come to this house. The greatest thing he could have ever received. He received salvation. Isn't it amazing? It says that in the beginning there, he sought Jesus. But he received salvation, so that means he found Jesus. Amen? Or Jesus found him. He got saved. Amen? So he had an anticipation and expectation and the realization that he got, he got saved. He got saved. When Jesus comes by, he's in your heart. When Jesus comes, there's a change in the heart. We see some genuine repentance in this man. Let's look at verse 8. Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. You see, to get the right frame of mind and to try and understand Zacchaeus, I believe you would have to understand Ebenezer Scrooge. Okay? To get a good picture here, I don't think this man cared for nobody. He was just out for himself. He didn't care about you. He didn't care if you went hungry. He didn't care about your family. All he was worried about was him. But once he received Jesus, there's some repentance that takes place in the heart of an individual. True repentance. And he says, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore to him fourfold. Jesus says salvation has come to this house. Salvation has come to this house. There's a change in the heart. I want to ask you a question. Are you living in spiritual poverty? Because that was this man's situation. Are you living in spiritual poverty? You need to be seeking after Jesus. Romans 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now we've met three people, three situations. They all had needs. They all had some anticipation, some expectations, and they came to the realization. They received God's blessing and helped them with their health, with their finances, their salvation. And we all want God's blessing. But I want to caution every one of us. Sin will cut off them blessings from God. I mean, it'll dry up. And if you're living in sin, don't you expect no blessings from God. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to lose your salvation. But I used to tell my youth a long time ago, God don't bless no mess. Let me repeat that. God don't bless no mess. God don't bless no sin. God and sin, they don't mix. And when you try and talk to God, there's a lot of static on the phone line when you're living in sin. The Lord's listening for you to repent. He's listening for you to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please help me. Sin will cut off the flow of blessings from heaven. If you're living in habitual sin, do not expect blessings from God. If you would, turn with me to Jeremiah 5.21. Jeremiah 5.21. Jeremiah 5.21. Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear you not me, saith the Lord? Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail? Though they roar, they cannot pass over it. But this people hath a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. 
Neither say they in their heart, Let us now fear the Lord our God that giveth rain, both the former and the latter in His season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. Let me repeat that. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. We need to repent. We need to repent. I remember a young couple came to me for premarital counseling years ago. And uh, the young lady had been in my youth ministry and she wanted me to marry her and her husband. And so we started out the first night and I asked some basic questions and come to find out they're living together. And I said, well, first thing y'all got to do is y'all got to get separated and you got to ask the Lord to forgive you for that because y'all ain't supposed to live together. Right? Uh, and so, you know, they, we left and they came back and I said, so what did y'all do about that? Well, we're still living together. I said, well, we can't go no further. I'm not going to marry you. You're living in sin. God's not going to bless you. You need God's blessing on your marriage, your relationship. You need God's help. There's nothing I can do if you choose to live in willful sin. Because God's not a part of it. And so they got mad and they left. And, you know, one of them's mama called me and chewed me out. And they're all Christians, by the way, or they profess to be Christians. If you would, turn with me to 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2. We're talking about getting God's blessings, wanting God's blessing in our life, wanting Him to help us. And He wants to bless you. He wants to help us in every aspect of our lives. 1 Peter 2.1 I'll read through verse 9. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious to who coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded, Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. You know, I was just thinking about Abraham. We're talking about blessings. God blessed Abraham. I think it's in Genesis 12. God calls Abraham and says, I want you to go into this land. I, I promise to you. He goes over there. I believe it's Bethel. He builds an altar. Worships God. But then some trials come. Some hard times. And he goes down into Egypt. Egypt is a type of the world. He gets in trouble down in Egypt. I'm just trying to make it short. But you know, he, he goes back to Bethel. He goes back to the place of that altar. He gets right with God. We need to examine our lives. Is there sin in our life? Is there something that we need to confess to God? Is there something we need to, to clean up? Is there something we need to take care of? 1 Peter 2.21-25 For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow His steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in His mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye are healed. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. We need to repent and live for Jesus.
and let the blessings flow. Psalms 34, 8 says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Him. The woman with the issue of the blood, she tasted, and she trusted, and she was blessed. The widow woman that was living in poverty, she tasted, she trusted, and she was blessed. Zacchaeus, who was living in spiritual poverty, he tasted, he trusted, and he was blessed. How about you? Are you in a place or a position where God can bless you? We'll have a song of invitation. Brother Mike, if you'll bring a song, I'm going to give you opportunity to respond to the message. But I want to ask you that question again. Are you in a place or position to be blessed by God? Gracious Heavenly Father, God, we thank You for Your message. God, we pray, Lord, that You'd use it for Your glory and honor tonight. Lord, if it's moved hearts, God, I pray You'd deal with hearts, change hearts, Lord, tonight. And I pray that we'd all be able to receive the blessings, God, that You so earnestly want to bestow upon us. Lord, help us each day, Lord, to live for You, to abstain from sin, and to trust in You. We love You, Lord, and thank You for all Your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand tonight. I surrender all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence. Daily You know, that's basically what all these people did that we mentioned tonight. That lady, she, after she tried everything else, she said, well, I'm just going to go to Jesus. She surrendered. So I surrender. I give up. Ain't nothing else working in my life. I'm just going to trust in Jesus. I urge you to do that tonight. Trust in Jesus. The woman living in poverty, she didn't have nowhere else to turn. She trusted Jesus. Zacchaeus, he says, I surrender. I surrender. I believe the man got under some real conviction, don't you? Go ahead, Brother Mike. leave you with one verse. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, that's repent, from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Thank you all all so much for coming tonight. I pray that uh, God will watch over us all. Pray for our pastor and Miss Carol. And uh, as I don't know if they've gotten back yet or not, but I thought he's probably going to be traveling today or tomorrow. So y'all be praying for them, okay? Uh, Brother Mike, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Our Father, Lord, thank you for the privilege to come to thy house one more time. Father, thank you for the service tonight. Thank you for the man.
connection with Brother Chuck, Lord. Teach us, Lord, to be faithful and trust you more every day in our lives. So I'm going to pray that you be with each one as we go to our homes tonight. Bless the ones that are traveling mercy. May we rest again on Wednesday night. Yeah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.